Hello there. We are nearing the end of my 30s. And uh, so this is the second of two videos I'm doing to kind of work my way up to my 40th birthday. Uh, the first video, I reviewed this. An 82 Port Ellen, which is probably now extortionally expensive. I haven't, I haven't checked. I can't, I can't do that to myself. Um, and I did this intentionally because I wanted to review a whiskey that was very, very, very good, even great, and also kind of unattainable. Because I wanted people, halfway through the review, to start checking the auctions and start checking, you know, how bad the gouging was at the local up, upper end bars to see, well, could, could they really afford maybe to try just, just a taste of this stuff. I wanted to get the FOMO going a little bit because then I wanted to start pumping the brakes and saying, because you shouldn't. You really shouldn't. This is absolutely phenomenal whiskey. And you need to let it go. Because there's other things out there. You can buy right now. Um, not, a, not for cheap, not really. Uh, but for reasonable prices that are much better than that. <coughs> so that's what this video is about. It's about, you know, not just pumping the brakes on, on, on missed whiskey FOMO, but burying the brake pedal, screeching halt on that so that people can get interested in other things that are out there and available right now. Uh, so what have I got here? I've got a bottle from Mezonte. Uh, this is one of their Jalisco bottlings. It also has a very annoying pour thing. Uh, what else have I got? I have got a barrio from Bazarmiak. This is a 1981 bottled in, uh, oh, April. Of last of this of this year, I'm sorry. I'll talk about each of these in turn. And I have got a Holmes K bottling of Hamden. It's in very small print there on the bottom, but it says Hamden Distillery in Trelawney. And this is of the C Diamond H mark. And uh, this is a barrel pick from uh, Rumchester, which is uh, Baytown Spirits in uh, Northern New York. <coughs> All right, and this is my, this is my big birthday blowout. All right, so let's, let's get this thing started. Um, with the Mezzante. I should, I, I need to lead into this bottle a little bit. Okay, so Mezzante is obviously a, a, a bottler of various agave spirits. I think uh, they do Jalisco and they do Guerrero, I believe. Um, I have to reread this stuff. Uh, and so this, this is basically a Ricea, but because Ricea, like Mezcal, is a regulated term of the Mexican government, and some of the small people do not want to bend the knee. Uh, this is being sold merely as a, you know, a destilado de agave, a spirit distilled from agave, rather than a proper uh, ricea. Um, now there's a whole bunch, there's a couple of different distillers in this range. This is distilled by Lorenzo and, and Tomas Virgen. Uh, this is their uh, uh, third batch, third lot, uh, made from six different magueys. I'm not going to name them all. <coughs> but distilled in a, in a Filipino still and a 220 liter batch. So not tiny. This was made in, in 2019, by the way. Not, not tiny, but not huge. It's around. Um, in uh, a lot of the big cities, this, this should be around. And the reason I bought it is because uh, I got poured a little sample bottle, of the, a sample glass of this, and it completely melted in my brain. Uh, and you get some sense of that when you read the reviews of this. There aren't a lot of reviews of, of the Virgin uh, Ricias out there. 
but I would like to review uh, or read a little bit of a review from Vatch 4, which is the one that came right after this, but apparently they're very similar. So this is from uh, mezcalreviews.com. I'm just going to pick out the, the, the choice bits. It's the most memeable review I have ever read. <clears throat> <clears throat> Pungent and prickling impact. Astringent effect. Dried out, flat and flabby alcohol, light body. Primarily sour chemical taste, burning mouth feel up front. Faulted spirit. Lacks organolectic soundless. Faulted by ethyl acetate and acetic acid. That would be um, nail polish remover and uh, vinegar. Um, watered down nail polish remover. There is no structure, no viscosity, no complexity, no character of raw material or category. Should not be bottled for, nor for sale. Worst spirit ever evaluated. It sounds awful. All right, so... Uh, so I'm now changing the name of the channel to... Lax Organolectic Soundless. Thank you very much. All right, uh, all right. Let's get our nose into this. See what's happening. <laughs> oh my god! the The first time you stick your nose into this, you re you know immediately it is time to buckle up. Um, it, utter madness, complete madness. Um. I mean, the the, the there's so many little things. The first thing I, I I pick up on is a, a, a kind of very estery note that reminds me a lot of high ester rums, like stuff like this. <coughs> Not so much Hamden, more like maybe maybe Long Pond or, or New Yarmouth. Um, it's, it's got that like, um, what is that? Like a Smarties note meets flowers meets rocks kind of thing. Meets some, maybe a couple of wild berries, just like a fruit basket. But that's all like married into a, like this just overt barnyard note. Like this is stinky. Um, <coughs> so you're getting rocks and flowers and fruit, but then like dirt, mud, animal stuff. Like, like it's, this is New Yarmouth rolling around with the pigs. I mean, that that's what it's, it smells like. Like, there's, like, there's poo, there's dead grass, there's wet fur. Oh. And then on top of that, on top of just that, you're going to throw in... <coughs> Sorry, I'm just getting over a cough. Um, I mean, basically an entire lemon. Juice, pulp, pith peel, seeds, entire lemon goes in there, and along with a scoop of fresh yogurt. There's a little touch of brininess in there, um, some salt water, there's um, Dijon mustard, of all things, vegetable broth, um, so the, the vegetable belly, better than bullion stuff, a little white pepper, yellow curry, It's completely alien. Completely, like, and I've had a couple of weird Ricias in my life. Even by those standards, this is, this is bonkers. All right, on the palate, here we go. God almighty. Oh, it's, it's, it's so weird and so good. <clears throat> I mean, trying this without, I've had some time to wrap my head around this, right? Like the initial experience of, of this is like, you've been listening to like Haydn and Beethoven all your life. You've gotten used to that. And then all of a sudden you get a chance to listen to like mature Ludoslavsky or something like someone throws the Ludoslavsky's two at you and as a matter of fact you are you are given permission to, to pause the video put on the Ludoslavsky second symphony okay we're gonna keep going and your initial impression is like is, is this a joke but but it's like it's too serious to be a joke so is, is it a mistake what is even 
but it it it, it has a structure to it, it has a form it has a a logic to it but it's it's just a completely different way of using like th these old tools these old flavors that um we we've become accustomed to in you know drinking in you know however long we've been drinking spirits it's mind warping in the best possible way that i i love this i love this bottle Oh my god. All right. I have to describe this. So we're going to we're starting again leading on like high estrogen Jamaican rum. So like uh you know, we're going to lead on 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 Long Pond TECC berries, rocks, flowers, fruit baskets, Smarties candies. Um uh one of those, the, 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 the Sour Patch candies, you remember those? A little bit of that. And then like aggressive sour lemon lime stuff. Like it's, it, I feel like I just drank some, a bunch of like unsugared sour mix. Um, and then there's like a, a kind of citrus candy thing. There's like a lemon drops aspect of this. And then tea. Um... Oolong tea predominantly, but also like a mix of different herbal teas. Kind of all, all that kind of appearing as you transition into the back end. And then there's, there's also those farmy notes, the, um, the muddiness, the, the, the hint, the, you know, the, like the, the old poo, that kind of stuff. I mean, when the guy talks about like uh, um, acetic acid, you know, vinegar. I, I disagree with his conclusion that this is the worst thing in the world, but you can kind of see where he's coming up. There is a vinegary aspect to this. Um, definitely citrus, yogurt, sherry vinegar, white pepper, cumin, curry, green curry this time. Um, and then just kind of this, yeah, this this generalized earthy, farmy character. This is, this is phenomenal, wild stuff. It is divisive. Like this will, you you drop this at a party, this will start fights. It absolutely will. Um, but I've I've totally fallen in love. So, so there we go. Mm. All right, I'm gonna add some water to this. Come back to it. Hopefully, I can still taste this after I after the Hamden. Uh, it's forty-seven, so maybe we'll give it a little extra drop. I should note I took my uh, my tasting notes for all these separately. I've never tried to do these um, in a row before. I have no idea what's going to happen. I don't know if my palate's going to survive this. We'll find out. All right. <coughs> I don't know who this, who these Virgen folks are, but like, I want to go visit them. Like, like they, they got some. Um, okay, Baryon. Uh, I discovered Baryon earlier this year. Um, little tiny uh, family-owned property right in the center of Baz Armagnac. Uh, and this is a 1981 from them, bottled April 7th. 2022, so 40, pretty much exactly 40 years old. Uh, bottled at 48% alcohol by volume. I do not remember the great breakdown off the top of my head, but this is from the uh, Clavery family. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, when, when I had this before, this stuff before, it was just uh, everything I loved about Armagnac. Like, <coughs> Before this and before Oronsan, really, I kind of always thought I would be on the fence between Cognac and Armagnac. I, would, I thought I would always, you know, say, um, no, they're, they're both great. That they're, and I can, I can drink and enjoy both and appreciate both equally. And now I am, thanks to Barry on and, and, and Daronsan, I think I'm firmly on Team Armagnac uh, for different reasons than other people. 
But uh, okay, enough of my yapping. Let's get in this. Baryon 1981 on the nose. I mean, on the nose initially, it's pretty perfect uh, old school Armagnac. Dirt. Lots dirt, lots of different kinds of dirt. There's dust, there's dirt, there's mud. Figs, prunes. There's like a rusty note to this, like a rusty old car. <coughs> lemon bars. Um, fresh lemon bars, straight out of the oven. More dirt, dried flowers. Not very prominent, but they're there. Um... Hints of like, I don't know, I hate to say rancio because it's such a meaningless term. It smells like a musty cellar, <coughs> but it's like a rust, a musty cellar full of like chairs that have, they're all kind of like starting to rot a little bit, like it's chairs with mushrooms growing on them, but nice. Black pepper, um, actually uh, there's some eucalyptus some basil you know what this actually smells like it's uh, it, there's like a almost like a rye note it's like you added a shot of thomas h handy into this um i mean it's subtle and really complex i have to say the first time i tried this bottle i wasn't sure i thought maybe the oak had taken over too much but now i don't know if it's if it's me if i'm adjusted to it or if it's just kind of taken on air and sorted itself out but now i'm like i'm just completely on board with this it's 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 complex but it's still rustic and i love that <coughs> all right on the palette oh god yeah no arguments please no arguments, please. Like this is great. This is just a great spirit. With the with the with the uh, the Virgin, I could see people fighting. Like I could absolutely see reasonable souls not being able to drink this. This is a different beast. Like this is just so classical in how it's put together. Mud, lemon, tobacco notes, Oriental tobaccos, old Oriental tobaccos. Maybe some Latakia thrown in there. Um, flowers, figs. Dried cherry. Apricot. Um, prune. Basil. Lots of basil. That rusty car thing, that's back. The mushroomy furniture thing, that's back. <coughs> Black pepper. Overstewed tea. Overstewed um, Darjeeling. Um... And then just this endless classical finish on like, you know, herbs and woods and like sour berries, sour blueberries maybe. <clears throat> One could still maybe, maybe accuse this of being too woody, but I don't really mind. Like it doesn't feel like it's unbalancing it. It's just like, it feels more like a stylistic choice. This is woody. It's absolutely woody, but it kind of rolls with it. It kind of makes it work. You know those bros who wear suits where their lapels are just too small, but they can kind of pull it off anyhow? This is like that. This is like, um, it's too much oak. It's, the lapels are too small, but it still makes it work. Um, okay. Okay. Man, these are good. I am not tasting anything after this. <coughs> okay, squirt of water, maybe a little bit more. I guess it's 48%. Mm -hmm. And I will come back to that momentarily. Oh, happy birthday to me. Okay. And last up, Holmes K, 
This is from Hamden Distillery, a.k.a. what I have said before is the greatest distillery in the world right now. This is the um, C uh, Diamond H mark, which is, if you look at the uh, the mark chart, is the second highest, uh, second, uh, second only to the DOK, which is the highest ester mark they can legally make. Uh, this was distilled in 2007, bottled 2022, it is barrel proof, and I think... Holmes case barrel proof thing is a little bit iffy, but this time I think it is actually the same alcoholic proof as it was in the barrel. Um, cast number 123. And it is a private selection by, again, Rumchester, which is Baytown uh, in New York. Um, oh, and it was apparently aged in recycled rum casks. Don't really know what that means, but uh, on the front it says a hogshead, so... Recycled rum hogshead, maybe? I, I'm guessing they got this from Sheer. <coughs> but I'm not totally sure. In any case, continentally aged, definitely. All right, uh, I don't know what else to say about this. It's extremely high ester, Hamden. I've, I've, I've uh, tried an old sibling of this, which I found to be the oak getting in the way a little bit. Um, so I'm hoping it doesn't happen here, but we shall see what happens. Right on the nose, 65.9% alcohol. All, oh, mm, all of these have phenomenal noses. I can you can immediately recognize this as high ester Hamden. That's that's basically what's so it's, we're just talking boxes of blueberries. That thing where you have flowers turning into rocks and, and then back into flowers. That um, very distinctive high ester note, which I kind of roll out, roll out on occasion. But it's actually more savory at times than I think of, of, those, of, of the docks as being, the DOKs. There's a lot, of, there's, there's just like gallons of concentrated seawater in this. Black olives. Fennel, lots of, like, fennel for days. <coughs> Pineapple, plantains, varnish. I mean, straight up varnish. There's like a, like a vintage car engine, like a hot vintage car engine. But it's got this halo around it of, like, <coughs> sorry. Um, well, vanilla, but also kind of like a bubblegum thing, like double bubble. Some tobacco, I don't know, like mixed tobacco, like, you know, you went to the Cornell and Deal warehouse and just opened up the box and threw them into the air. Um, a little bit of a coconut pie thing. I mean, it, it's stunning. Like, this is... It's, you're taking the, the, the basics of really, 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 really high ester Hamden, and you're just giving it this overcoat of oaky deliciousness. And it works. Like, it doesn't, at least right now, it feels like the oak is not getting out of hand, which I appreciate. All right, on the palate. Huge, palate crushing. Like if you had a glass of Laphroaig after this, you would not be able to taste it. Um, <coughs> oh, where to start? Um, it's interesting. Let me start with the form of this. Like, it, it's a fun contrast with the with the with the Baryon because the Baryon has a very distinctive kind of classical form. It arrives very fruity, and a little bit sour. And then it kind of develops uh, to be kind of more bitter and a little bit cooling on the finish. And it's very, it's very grippy on the finish. This doesn't really do that. It just kind of lands in your mouth, explodes, and it's kind of done. Um, it doesn't develop in the same way. It, but there's just, there's so much there that it almost doesn't matter. Um, it's very briny. Let's start with that, brine. 
a little squirt of lime juice too. Actually quite a lot of lime juice now that I'm getting a hold of this. Olives, fennel, and then all, all hell breaks loose. All the esters, the berries, the flower, rocks, flowers, rocks thing. Pineapple. But then, after all hell is broken loose, bananas foster. Cream soda. Coconut pie again. <coughs> sweet tea. Overstewed sweet tea. Um, tobacco, but it's, it's more like um, a mix of both case tobacco and, and unflavored. Like, so, uh, you know, your, your uncle's crappy plum flavored pipe tobacco, but then you mix it up with like some really hardcore, you know, Virginia Perique stuff, that kind, that kind of thing. Um, I mean, the, 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 the esters are really ruling in the finish. And again, it's not, it's not really, the finish is not really development of new flavors. It's just a, the a kind of the old, the same flavors hang on. Um, the esters are kind of ruling the roost, but those kind of sweet tea notes are really putting up a fight. Um, this is an, this is amazing stuff. I mean, if you had told me you would eat, that it would be so easy, at least it's making it, it, this is making it seem easy to find a balance between good old fashioned American oak and a ginormous load of rummy esters. I don't know if I would have believed you, but here we are. Uh, okay, I'm gonna give this some water and we'll go back through, the, through our trio one more time. <coughs> Or this will probably need five at least. These are so good. Let's say five and a half, and I'm scared to go more than that. All right. Hopefully, I can still taste things after that ham done. <coughs> Jesus. Okay, let's go back through, back to the uh, the the Mezante Virgin. Uh, six agaves, and I am really excited to see what madness pops up now that this thing has had some water thrown into it. Ooh, on the nose now with water. This actually gets more like pickly and vinegary. Like in a in a really nice way. Yeah, the the, the I was gonna say, hmm. So initially, I thought the the esters and the and the the, the rocks and the the barnyardiness had receded a little, uh, or maybe you had. Um, they just seemed overwhelmed by after I had the the Hamden, but I don't think so. I think they have actually receded with water in favor of this kind of more subtle, pickly, vinegary thing. Lots of flowers now. Um, <coughs> that kind of mustardy note is still there. That yogurty note, all the lemon, all the all the same stuff is there. It's just that the pickles have kind of come forward to to take the lead in a way that I, I'm, I'm actually kind of into. On the palate. Mm -mm. <laughs> it's so different from everything, everything else I've ever had. And it, with water, the, it just gets better and better. Like, especially on the finish, the finish just gets grippier and more sour and a little bit more funky too. There's some soy sauce coming out now. Mm. 
not organoleptically sound. Are you kidding me? But this, the, the soy sauce is actually mingling with the citrusy notes. There's some mixed herbs. Oh, it just, it arrives sour and it kind of closes even more sour. But the way it, but there is development here. It's just development along the, that spine of sourness. It's so, like, again, as I was saying before, it's so different from any other spirit I can, I can put my, 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 my finger on. But there is a logic to this. There is a, a, a sensibility that I can follow and make sense of. And I, I, I'm just blown away by, by the quality. Um, this is not inexpensive, but it, it's, it's worth the price. Ninety-two points. I am giving ninety-two points to this Mazante Alisco from uh, the Virgin family, batch three, six uh, six magays. Insane in, in the best possible way. Um, if you see this, if you get a chance to try this in advance, do it. Um, but. Even if not, I mean, if, if you're watching this channel, you're probably a weirdo like me, so you'll probably appreciate this. Go for it. Just go for it, if you see it. <coughs> okay, moving on to the... I'm still tasting that kind of yogurty soy sauce, citrus thing. Man, that's good. All right, back to the uh, Barillon. 1981. Now with some water. Here we go. On the nose. Ooh. There is a definite maple syrup note coming out now, but like like real maple syrup. This is not the not the cheap crappy stuff. This is the real stuff. It gets more floral as well. Um, a little bit more dusty. There's some like tea leaves and some flowers. And just a ton of just the glories of French oak, you know? Um, black pepper and dried fruit. And yeah, that kind of funky maple syrup note. Sorry, I burped there. Yeah, good, phenomenal nose. <coughs> <coughs> Jesus. My palate is afraid. After that last Mizante, it is afraid to, to try something that might be even better. Let's see what we got um, on the palate. Fuck. Fuck, that's good. Mm, I mean, okay. As much as I love the Mazante, the, the, the Virgin, for being different. And I can't even, even really say the Baragon is better, but there, there's just something about the... The development on, on this Baragon is astonishing. It's like, it just... It just has like this progression that is so familiar, but it does it so well. I mean, it's it's like as as much as I love the Ludoslavsky too. This is like going back to like I don't know the um, <coughs> a really great performance of like the the Beethoven Seven or something. You know, like which is just you've heard it a zillion times, but you know when it's the right conductor, man, it's oh god, it's good. Mm. So, with water, the oak steps forward, but in a really, really good way. And along with that, so do the flowers. And so does a little bit of the sour lemon note. Like, the, the development is... How do I even describe... So it arrives so fruity and floral and beautiful and kind of lemony sour.
And then it transitions from there in the middle to this kind of aggressive dustiness. <coughs> and then from there, it's still not out of tricks. Like it turns into like just dried fruit out the wazoo, coffee, everything, all the coffee, um, campfire smoke, black pepper, cooling herbs everywhere. Ah, uh, uh. it just, it just, the, the way it goes from fruity and floral to sour to like bitter and herbal is, is, I wish I could, could, you know, could, you know, let you try this. You really, I mean, you should try the Mazante more because this is kind of newer, but as, as an example of like the classical form on spirits, you cannot do better than this Baryon, or at least it would be really hard. Hold on, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back to the, to the Virgin. Completely different. Completely different, but same score. 82 points for the 1981 Baryon. I'm sorry, 82, 92. 92 points <coughs> for the 81 Baryon. Um, yeah, the, I mean, just both of these are mind bogglingly good and so different. All right, and uh, last up. Starting to run out of time here. Uh, back to the uh, the C Diamond H. Here we go. Now with a little bit of water, or quite a lot of water actually, on the nose. So what I was scared of was that with the addition of water, the oak would step forward to kind of throw this out of balance too much, and that has not happened. It's actually the flowers and like the brininess that have really stepped forward. And if anything, the, the, the vanilla and the kind of coconut pie thing have kind of pulled back a little bit. Which is fine with me because it, it now just smells like high ester Hamden, which is one of the most unique and glorious and special smells in all of spirits. Okay. Uh, let's see what happens on the palate. Again, the oak doesn't get out of control. It doesn't recede anything more on any more than on the on the nose. I mean, it doesn't really do anything with water except just get kind of more easily drinkable because the alcohol is a little bit more strained. Um, so not a lot of development, but it it didn't really need it. That's not that's not really the kind of spirit this is. Um, <coughs> Both of these two, strictly speaking, have more complex developments than this Holmes K. Um, but I don't care. I don't really care. Oh, actually, the oak does come out a little bit more with, in a little bit more grippiness on the finish. That's actually really nice. Um, yeah, I don't, it, it doesn't have that kind of like uh, sweeping uh, development that you get, in, especially in, in the Baryon. But there's just so much flavor here. And now I'm, gonna, I'm kind of fighting myself because the, the formalist in me wants to give these higher scores. But everything else is screaming at me that, that I need to you know, not hop a point above these for the Holmes K because it, it, there's just so much flavor packed into this little glass. Oh, and it's so savory. I mean, with the DOK, I'm used to like the flowers and the rocks and the fruit just overwhelming everything. So you kind of forget that it's a rum, but this still has like the 
like the brine and the olives and the fennel and all that other stuff. God, it's good. 93 points. 93 points for this uh, Holmes K. Hamden uh, C. Diamond H. This is extremely, extremely good. Um, and all of these are extremely, extremely good. And you will notice from looking at the scores, 92, 92, and 93, that they all score better than this far more famous and far more prominent 1982 Port Ellen, which is not at all a bad bottle. This is a 91, right? <coughs> and that's kind of my point as I transition from, you know, the my uh, misspent youth to uh, a wiser old age, that uh, you don't need to hold on to the glories of the past because the present has got plenty of glories all of its own. Grab these while you still can. Um, yeah, and there's more, more out there like this. Uh, and that's all I gotta say. Thank you for watching. I'll uh, have a few more videos before the end of the year. Hopefully they'll be fun. Hopefully I'll get rid of this cough. And uh, yeah, thanks and cheers, bye.